morning. Welcome you here to this beautiful church, St. Michael the Archangel. On this, the last Sunday in our liturgical year, we celebrate the feast of Christ the King. We offer this Holy Mass today for the blessed repose of the soul of Stephen Voice, and this would be the feast day of St. Cecilia. And so, if you would permit, we want to offer this Mass for all the Cecilias, but particularly for my grandmother, Cecilia James, and for Jean's mother, Cecilia Janchik. We begin this Holy Mass as we begin all our prayer to God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and is one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they are, where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my shepherd, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Besides restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oils. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead also came through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, when everything is subjected to him. Then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. 
Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, the 19th chapter of the Gospel of John has these words. And Pilate had written on an inscription and placed on the cross, Jesus Nazarenos Rex Judeorum, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. If you've looked at a crucifix, many of them have an inscription, and you'll see the letters I N R I. They are the first letters of that inscription in the Latin. And you know, if irony were butter, you could not cut through that more with the hot knife. The, the pronouncement of condemnation, the charge for which Jesus was nailed to the cross, became a pronouncement to the whole world of the truth that we celebrate today, that Jesus is king not only of the Jews, but of the entire world. For it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin, the language of the kingdom. Jesus is king, and we share in his reign. If you don't believe me, how many of you have been to a Catholic baptism? Show of hands if you've been to a Catholic baptism. So we've all, we know the part in the sacramental grace is imparted when the deacon or the priest or the bishop pours water over the individual's head, whether it be a child or an adult, and says the word, so and so, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But then right after that, there is an anointing with sacred chrism. Of our seven sacraments, sacred chrism is only used in three because this anointing, this mark of the sacrament, marks a very specific change in the soul. You'll hear a big word, ontology. Ontology means a study of the order of reality. In these sacraments, with that anointing, hearkening back to the ancient Jewish people, priests, prophets, and kings were anointed with oil to strengthen them for their mission on earth. And indeed, in baptism, we were anointed with the sacred chrism. I love to see it with, the, with babies especially, because then they smell so good. Sacred chrism, that special oil consecrated by the bishop at the chrism mass, is a little bit different than the other two oils that are blessed. For it has balsam, aromatic balsam, infused in it. It's a little darker, and it smells so wonderful. And everybody who's holding the baby likes to smell their head because it smells great with that aromatic oil on there. And at that moment in baptism, the soul is marked as having been changed, more closely configured to God in the order of reality, in its ontology. This will happen again in confirmation. The bishop or his designee will trace a cross with the sacred chrism on the forehead of the confirmandi, receive the Holy Spirit, gift of the Father. And then for a priest, not so much for a deacon, which has always kind of surprised me, but for a priest, 
On the day of ordination in holy orders, the bishop anoints their hands, front and back, with sacred chrism. For a bishop himself, when he is made a bishop in holy orders, the holy, order, the holy oil, the sacred chrism, is poured over his head, hearkening back to the anointing of the high priest Aaron. We are made at baptism, though, my friends, a share of Christ, munis triplex, as it's called, the threefold office of Christ. We are made part as priest, prophet, and king. So what does it mean to us to be a king? Years ago, I went to visit one of my troops who was going through the officer candidate school at 48 Town Gap. As they prepared to do physical training, they had a class shirt. I'll never forget what they had as their motto on the back of that class shirt. Five simple words. To lead is to serve. Indeed, my friends, that's what we hear in sacred scripture today. From Ezekiel chapter 34, we hear of the shepherd who will judge the sheep. But a shepherd, nevertheless, the gentle and thoughtful and kind, merciful servant. We heard Psalm 23, you hear it at almost every funeral. It's words of comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians from chapter 15, we hear of the lamb who was slain, who laid down his life to destroy sin and death. And he will be a king like no other, for he will turn over his kingdom to his father. Not many kings would do that. And then most particularly in the gospel, we heard the, Lord's, of the words of Jesus himself. And so we must know in our hearts that yes, faith is important for our salvation, but we will be judged by the works we do, by the service that we render, especially to the poor, to the needy, to the hungry, and to the thirsty, those that are in prison, those that are ill. How great a meaning that has for us in this era of coronavirus. In a few moments, my friends, we are going to receive the gift of the Lord in his body and blood and the soul and divinity, the very being of the king of the universe, whose reign in the kingdom he's called us by our baptism to share with him for all eternity. As we approach to receive the Lord, may our prayer be that of thanksgiving that we have such a good and gracious King in Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. May we ask for the grace as we prepare to receive and hold in our hands the one who orders and reigns over all things that we may have the grace to serve him in those that are the least of our brothers and sisters. And that as we walk away, having received the Lord with gratitude, may the prayer on our lips be those beautiful words that we heard the Lord today, that all of us, I pray, hope to hear someday from our Lord on the throne. Come, you blessed of your Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you for all eternity. Amen.
And in the words now of our earliest symbologian, the Apostles' Creed, let us profess our faith in God and in his creation. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of the Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus looks to us in the faces of those we often prefer not to see, the homeless, the working family standing in the food pantry line, the undocumented immigrant, and children fleeing violence. For the many people and places where Jesus awaits our response in love, we bring to him now our prayers and our needs. For Bishop Amber and all bishops, that they shepherd the church with Christ's watchful tenderness, teaching us by example to recognize Christ everywhere, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the global community, that people of goodwill will follow shepherd leaders who courageously seek to care for people afflicted and oppressed without regard to political reward, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that our charitable giving this holiday season be real, not expecting recipients to be grateful, but desiring better for them than life has presently given, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the faithful who share their blessings through the diocesan annual appeal, and those in need who will benefit from diocesan ministries, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For persons who suffer ill health, including those struggling against COVID-19, and all the sick and homebound of our parishes, that they be bound up in God's healing grace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, for people who gave their lives in advocacy or service on behalf of the oppressed and the voiceless, and for all who died recently, including Diane Dobyshevsky, that they awake to recognize the one who has served in this life. And for today's Mass, and for the today's Mass intention for Stephen J. Voice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the blessed repose of all the holy souls in purgatory and particularly on this feast day of St. Cecilia, for the blessed repose of the soul of Cecilia Janczyk and Cecilia James, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, good and gracious God, creator of the heavens and the earth, creator of all time and space, the king of the universe, we pray you that we may be, that you may be the king of our hearts and that you may answer these prayers in accordance with your holy will, giving us the trust and confidence and faith to follow you. As we join them now with those of your blessed mother before the throne and say, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of, of grace, grace. The, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, holy Mary, Mary mother, mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now and, and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen.
And pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his holy rule he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom a kingdom of truth and life a kingdom of holiness and grace a kingdom of justice love and peace and so with all the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing forever the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the living members of our families, our benefactors, and our parishes. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, and communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and Our Lady of Mount Carmel, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those that you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the glorious resurrection from the dead and ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to the glory of your majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Stephen, Cecilia, and Cecilia, and all who've gone before us marked with the sign of faith and rest now in the sleep of peace, the deceased members of our families, our benefactors, and our parishes. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in the, your abundant mercies and love, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Rose of Lima, Saint Cecilia and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Historia Nobis. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Oh, my God. 
Christ. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, that we may live with him eternally in the heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we have the final blessing and dismissal. A couple of announcements. First of all, uh, regarding the Christmas Mass schedule. So after much lengthy discussion at our 
last uh, Paris Council meeting, which was on the 17th, uh, it was decided based on uh, the situation, the circumstances, our capacity, and um, you know a number of factors that are beyond our control, but you know, particularly some of the logistical concerns, that we will uh, live stream our Christmas uh, vigil mass from St. Rose at 4 p.m. We are so blessed to have Mark Ruddy and, and the wonderful work that he does. And the live stream, if you've watched it, uh, is of the highest quality. And uh, so we're gonna obviously encourage you to watch that. And also uh, on Christmas day at 10 a.m., uh, that mass will be live streamed from Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Now what's a little different between Christmas and Easter is we are gonna have a distribution of communion immediately following. Uh, at St. Rose, it'll be in the driveway uh, adjacent to the, uh, to the rectory, and there will be traffic control uh, to help us get in and out safely, because it'll be uh, uh, dark, obviously. And then on uh, Christmas Day, it'll be up at the feast grounds immediately following Mass. And once again, we'll have some traffic control available, but at least it will be daylight. Now, I recognize that this may be a great disappointment, and we are still, uh, at this point, attending Mass in person, and that's good. Uh, but this was just one of the things in discussion that we decided uh, for everybody's health, welfare, and uh, our ability to be able to do this well, this would be the best way. And one of the things I do encourage you that both Easter and Christmas are not just one day, one Mass, but they're celebrated as an octave. And while we may not have all the music for the next seven days after Christmas, we invite you to come in person. The churches will be decorated. The masses that are celebrated those days are the same Christmas mass. So come for the octave. Uh, additionally, uh, to be able to help us to do what Jesus talks about doing today in the gospel, we'll have the community meal, which will be um, reinstated back on beginning on Thursday, the 3rd of December at noon. Community meal was always a, 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 wonder, a wonderful opportunity, especially for those uh, that did not have great means to come together. Now, regrettably, given the circumstances, the meal has to be offered only as takeout. We are so grateful for all the volunteers for the community meal that will be supporting that. We'll get the food uh, from St. Francis of Assisi's uh, soup kitchen and give it to the folks that come to the meal. And what we can do, each of us, is help spread the word so that everyone knows that this is available and get the word out. And um, we look forward to be able to provide this service to everyone beginning on the 3rd of December. The second collection today is for the annual Campaign for Human Development. We are most grateful for your generosity and ask that you continue to generously support that collection. And don't forget that the calendars uh, for the Holy Name Society uh, are now available. So if you're interested in that, ask uh, some of the members. My gratitude to each and every one of you for in these difficult times of uh, being here and showing and sharing your faith. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.